Hey, what's going on? It's your boy coach. And if you're clicking into this series, if you have no interest in nutrition and education, things like that, um, you already have all that stuff down, then go ahead and click out, go find another video that's gonna be uh, more appropriate, more entertaining, more what you wanna see. So this is something that I've designed that's kind of the starting point for those that are interested in um, changing their nutrition or starting nutrition or struggling with nutrition and trying to you know find a better path so the quick disclaimer I'm not a doctor I'm not certified I'm not licensed I'm not a dietitian I'm not any of those things I'm just sharing experience I've been a part-time student for the last say four years I'm a psychology major well versed in things like research experiments I do apply a lot of the principles that I've learned about and it's been very helpful in terms of me making change it's something that I ignored probably in the first five years of my journey that I always thought it was some diet or some hack or some tip that I wasn't doing and that's why I wasn't staying successful. So nothing visually appealing going on in this video. So it's really just the audios which you're gonna need um, just so you know, digest whatever you can. The first thing you're gonna have to have in this is an open mind. And I was all about you know following what nutrition advice was always best, what I read about. And what I discovered over time is that the research and what people are recommending, they conflict. And so which way is right? And that's what's really difficult in being successful with specifically in nutrition. Um, you know, one week a glass of wine a night is healthy, the next week it's not so much the case. So which, which way do you go? And that's kind of what I started doing is I started just trying different things, trying to bust myths out there. And now, unfortunately, when I started health and fitness about eight years ago, I picked up a number of, I would say, eating disorders, um, I picked up some, I would call bad habits in terms of how I viewed food, how I viewed nutrition. Um, I, you know, I did a lot of elimination things, a lot of um, uh, absolutes, a lot of extremes. And in the end, you know, because I was trying to follow what people were saying was working. And this is a big industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry that people are making a boatload of money on. And I'm not trying to say that everything out there is bogus. There's some things that I do believe that are effective, but at the same time, there's people out there just trying to make money and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I will say, if you're trying to buy the latest pill, the latest tip, the latest secret, the latest program that's gonna give you the guaranteed results, I would always be cautious of that. And it, I know that we all have different needs. Some of us do need special programs or certain resets to start over, you know, and, and we'll get into that stuff in the future. But when it on specifically on nutrition, there's a lot of ads out there. Don't eat these foods. Don't do this. Don't do that. You need to do this. You need to do that. And in the end, if you're trying to just do fat loss, which is what we're going to be focusing on, you need a calorie deficit and how you get that. There's so many possibilities. It really is going to depend on not just your personality, your lifestyle, your environment. It's going to really depend on effective it is and how long you stick with it. What I found in dieting, is that uh, there's a number of different systems and programs out there and most of these extreme diets are only good for extremes there are some of you out there that need the extremes and you'll stick with them but it's very few and so the rest of us will try those diets there was something that was you know really hard or we just pushed through and mentally it was very taxing there's a number of things that happened in the process and what do we end up doing we quit and we change we go back we revert to where we were before which means what we didn't change any of our habits now, if you did a system and you took away a few nuggets and those are permanent change and you got rid of the stuff you don't want, I'm a firm believer in that. Is we find things that are effective and that we like and that are giving us progress and the things that don't make sense or the things that don't work in our world or even if you know 90 out of 100 people, it works for them, it might not work for you, then don't do it. Like specifically for this series, what I'm gonna go into is kind of my philosophy, my um, what, what, not just what works for me, but what kind of makes sense overall. And especially when you're trying to build a calorie deficit, it's one of those things that, you know, you're going to have to um, not necessarily learn about every little detail of how the body works, of how nutrition hits, because that's something too, is you don't want to be overloaded with all these facts and all these things. You're going to make it complicated. You just kind of need the basics. And to me, the first thing is learning about calories. It's energy. And then if you can learn how much energy you need per day to be at maintenance, that's a really important um, number that we can use and to our advantage, especially in weight loss and fat loss. So I think one of the biggest things that's going to come up and that's really important to understand is not just having an open mind, but just seeing that um, our definition of what healthy really is. I changed my window on that a, long, uh, a number of years ago. Health by definition is the absence of sickness. 
So depending on whatever your goal is, now if you have medical reasons to diet a certain way or be on these very unique programs, then like I said, you need to see a doctor. I am not a doctor. I'm not even a dietitian, but I'll tell you right now, I know how to run a calorie deficit and to do it with the least amount of suffering. And that's what my goal is to share is how some of those things that you might find and say, wow, I didn't know about this. Who knew? You know, I don't really like to take supplements just because like, how do you know if they work? In the world of psychology, there's this huge thing called placebo and there's a reason it's incorporated in any experiment because it has such a powerful effect. If placebo works, I'm all for it because that means it got the results you were intending to get. But just so you know, it just it doesn't mean that that was the actual, the, the actual product or whatever consum consumable you took made the difference. It was a power of the mind. It's tremendously difficult to be successful unless you're shopping. You need a couple of different things. Number one is a food scale. Um, you need a way to track um, your, like a food diary. I use my fitness pal. I think that's a popular one, but there's a number of them out there. Just make sure that, you know, whatever you're using is somewhat accurate. If you're eating out, you cannot be accountable because you don't know the menu isn't right. I hate to break it to you, but just because something says 500 calories, that was done in a very, say, uh, controlled environment, and they had, you know, certain things. You don't know what how the workers prepared your food. It's really difficult. You know, the best start is to kind of be sort of disciplined for the first month or two, just trying to figure out, okay, let's weigh food, let's be accountable, let's see what's changing in our body. When you prepare food, you know how it's made, you've weighed it out, versus if somebody, if you're buying another meal, you're trusting whatever they gave you is what they said it is, and labels aren't always right. So cooking not only does that, but it also gives you a sense of pride that when you make something, you'll tend to eat it because like, well, I prepared this. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. You know, I may as well eat it, and it's gonna make you a better cook because when you make food that doesn't come out right and you get through it, that's a great staple for next time. Like, you know what, I needed X, Y, and Z. And that's why um, cooking, in my opinion, is an absolute must. The meal prep side is how you combine all the elements to make something that's enjoyable, it's fit for you, hits your preferences. Figure out what ingredients go well for you and then make sure that when you're preparing those in trays or containers or whatever it is, that it's, it's how you like it. So meal prep doesn't need to be at a trays like I do. It can be different. You can have it on a plate. It's whatever way you like to have your food in front of you. Food presentation is important to some people. It's not to me because I eat so much food. So I just kind of slap it in there and just kind of get it down. And that's to me how I fit. But if you're struggling with dieting and you're having a hard time losing weight, the first thing you're gonna notice is that we minimize things like, you know, um, excessive fat and sugars and higher, you know, say carbs that make things so highly palatable. And there's nothing wrong with highly palatable foods, but they can just lead to overeating. To be in a calorie deficit, we need to eat less energy than we expend. In my theory, in my philosophy, it is essential to have the shopping, the cooking, and the prepping, and they're separate elements. And there's different ways you can do them all, but those are absolutes that you, I believe you have to have in order to figure out how many calories that you are consuming and how many calories that you need to create, I would say the best deficit to keep you going without having to rebound or re revert back because What'll happen a lot of dieting programs, and I've noticed this, they'll have the calories so low that you know, you're kind of starving all the time. And if you're always hungry, you're gonna be food fixating, you're gonna be irritable, grouchy, you're gonna lose focus, things like that. And we don't ever wanna be in a high calorie deficit. Um, something else we'll learn too is how it's not so much important that what you eat every day, it's that whole week. But we tend to build habits on those seven days. Days themselves can kind of sort of vary, right? Unless you have the exact same day, seven days, which I don't know anybody that does. And there's some people that have really changing, really flexible, really wild schedules. But I would say too, and if you really looked at it, each week is somewhat defined and somewhat relative to the other one. If you go into a month, a month is just kind of hard. That's more for long-term. When you're looking to make this a lifestyle and stick with this, we look at monthly data. If I eat all nutrient dense all the time, that's not a good balance because I just get to the point where it's a job and I don't even look forward to food. And then there's fun meals I make and if all I do is fun meals, then guess what? I'm probably not getting the nutrients I need to feel my best and hit the gym or exercise or things like that. So that's not best. So it's this blend in between and that's really what I believe in nutrition is overall is balance. And it's why it's so important to learn about calories and how to make meals because we can find things that I don't think are generally available. Now, if you're one of those people that like to go buy 
say, you know, healthy meals and you're gonna spend the money on that, that's fine. The one thing you're not giving yourself though is that, um, that extra experience and knowledge on how, okay, if you have a week where you don't have that service, how are you gonna be successful that week? It's really important in my mind to learn at least how to get a baseline, make some meals, and that way you can, you know, spin those things or if you come into a, a situation where, you know what, I'm not gonna have meals for a few weeks and or I went on vacation, like, you can at least have something on hand or something that's gonna help you with your deficit. Each week, I'm gonna try and do my best to make sure, you know, at least the first five minutes are just kind of a quick overview, like not necessarily a summary, but just some pointers you can kind of start seeing or things you can, little takeaways that, you know, that are hopefully educational and things you didn't know, or maybe you did, or if you disagree with them, maybe challenge why you disagree with them. Why does coach do that then? And I'm doing that. The whole point is, is think different things work for different people. So. It turns out that we just all have different needs. We all have different struggles. We all have different uh, downfalls. And for the most part, a lot of these concepts are gonna hit the majority um, in the bell curve where you know it can make a difference. And I'm not guaranteeing that difference, but if you take some things away from this and it changes you even by a little bit, then hey, I met my goal. And actually that's what it was intended to do is the system that you went through. But hey, I took a couple things away from coach and now I use those and I'm a little bit better than I was before. Okay, so that's a whole lot of information. Let's go ahead and wrap this up really fast just because I understand you got other things to do and this is a very, very specific series and just intended for those out there who are trying to change their nutrition and learn about it. I will see you in the very first video which is gonna be specifically on shopping. So uh, we'll see you then, take care, peace.